Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use some of RTX's new features inside a touch designer. Now, if you've played around with NVIDIA's broadcast software, it's really cool. I'm actually using it right now, and that's how I have this nice little keying happening in the bottom corner of the screen. But we're going to look at how we can actually use that inside of your installation. Those same technologies and tools from the NVIDIA broadcast app are now natively available inside a touch designer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all this and we'll get started again. So the first thing I have here is a quick little movie recording of me in front of the webcam. And I can't actually do it live at the same time because I have me down here in the corner. But this is just me, normal webcam, Logitech C920, nothing fancy. And what we're going to do is take advantage of the NVIDIA background top. Now, if you haven't been keeping up with a lot of the new RTX features that are available on the RTX Quadro cards and the RTX uh, GeForce cards, there's a lot of really cool stuff. And one of them is being able to key yourself out of an image or key people, multiple people out of an image without any kind of green screen or special technology. All you need is an RTX card. So either a 20 series or newer, and it's going to do it all with machine learning. So that's pretty cool. Now, this NVIDIA background top is going to be the secret magic sauce that's going to help us do this because what it's going to do is use all that machine learning and give us a mat, a black and white mat, where white is going to be where the people are and black is going to be basically just the background. So what we can do just to even get started with this is take our movie file in here and I recorded this at 1920 by 1080 and I'm going to plug it into my NVIDIA background app and you can immediately see what I was talking about where we have a white mask where I am and all of the background is black. Now you can see also it does a pretty good job dealing with things like chairs uh, but you may want to try and make your environment as clean as possible if you're using this in an installation. Now one thing that I highly recommend especially when using the NVIDIA background top and really this applies to a lot of open CV and computer vision workflows is really try and use the smallest texture size possible because what you're going to see if I middle click on this it's taking almost three milliseconds of my GPU time, which is quite a lot. But if I go ahead and do something like insert a resolution top after my movie file in and before my NVIDIA background top, what I can do is turn on the high quality resize and make that half resolution. Once the NVIDIA background top recomputes, you can see this is taking much, much less. And once this average catches up, we'll see it's going to be about 1.3 or 1.4 milliseconds. So that's almost half of the amount of compute power. Now that I have this background, we can go ahead and start using it immediately. So if I was going to use this, one thing that you have to know is that if you middle click on it, you'll see that it actually outputs an 8-bit fixed mono texture. Now this might not be something you're used to, especially if you're just used to working with webcams and movies, because those are 8-bit fixed RGBA. So if you tried to do something like maybe throw down a multiply top and connect your original resolution input source against this mat, you're going to start seeing strange things like all of a sudden it's black and white. And that's because if I middle click on this, we'll see that now my multiply is 8-bit fixed mono. So it's basically just a grayscale texture. A lot of the time when you're dealing with this NVIDIA background top, or really any kind of 8-bit fixed mono texture, you may actually want to turn to using something like a matte. Let's see here, matte top. And the nice thing about a matte is that it's really ready to deal with these grayscale textures. So if you've never used matte top, don't worry, it's very easy. It's got three inputs. You've got your first input, your second input, and both of those are going to be your content. So you can think about them like the A deck and the B deck. And then you're going to have your third input, which is essentially going to be the black and white mask that tells the matte top, which deck should I reveal for this particular pixel? So we can go ahead and try to plug some of these things in. So I know that my first kind of main content source is actually going to be my movie file. So just for the sake of neatness, I'll make a null top, connect my movie file here and drag that to my first input. Now for my second input, I can decide what I want to do in the place where the background gets cut out. So this could be anything from just having a blank alpha channel. I could put another movie texture, like maybe a nature scene or something like you saw at the beginning. We're going to start simple because I imagine that a lot of people using this are going to want to 
have the person just with a blank alpha channel background, which is going to be really useful if you are doing some nice compositing workflows or even just using it for some nice special effects. So I'm going to go ahead and make a constant top and I'm going to turn the alpha all the way down to zero. And I can go ahead and plug that in as my second input. So this way, anywhere where there is white inside of my mat, I'm going to see me and anywhere there's black, it's going to use this constant. So now I can go ahead and grab this NVIDIA background top output and plug it into that mat. Now you may also see that immediately it doesn't start working. And that's because by default, the mat top is actually looking for the alpha channel to use for its matting. Now in this case, because we just have a 8-bit mono, so there is no alpha channel to begin with, we can go ahead and change that mat channel to luminance. Once we do that, we can immediately see it's starting to do its keying magic. But there's a couple of problems. First of all, you're going to notice a little bit of latency between the main video feed, in this case that movie file, and the actual background subtraction. And it looks like the background subtraction is delayed. Now this is known and, you know, there's ways around this. The first and usually suggested way around this is to actually delay your video signal by about two to three frames because that's how long it takes this NVIDIA background, you know, machine learning API, that's how long it takes to do its work. So in this case, what I recommend doing is in this signal flow in between kind of the main video feeding in and the area where I'm going to map, I'm going to insert a cache top. And this is a really easy way just to delay video signals by one, two, three, or, or more frames if you want. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn down the cache size because if you leave it at 32 and maybe you're working on a weaker system, what you'll notice is that if you middle click, it starts to take a lot of memory because it's holding 32 frames worth of data at 1920 by 1080 resolution. In this case, I know that I'm only going to really delay it by two or three frames, so I can set my cache size to just be three. And when you do that, you'll see all of a sudden it takes much less GPU memory to use. Now I want to set the output index and what I really recommend doing for this because there is no magic number. It's, it's usually between two to three frames is kind of the sweet spot, but depending on your system and GPU, maybe it might be a little bit less or maybe it might be a little bit more. The resolution that you're feeding into the NVIDIA background top also affects this. So the higher resolution is going to take a little bit more time to process. And that's why doing something like halving the resolution before it goes in there can often be very helpful. So in this case, what I'm going to do is have the parameters of my cache top open. And I'm actually going to look at the mat top. And slowly and steadily, I'm just going to add more frames of delay. So I can go to my output index. Right now it's set to zero, which is essentially the latest frame. I can set it to negative one. So now give me one frame in the past. So delay my video stream by one frame. We can see it's a little bit closer. So let's go to minus two. So now it's two frames delayed. And we can see it's even closer now, especially when I move my head, we can see that it's very close. In this case, I find with my combination of camera, resolution, and system, three frames seems to be that nice sweet spot. And let's see here. And if you still see a little bit of delay, feel free to add another frame here. So we can say, let's do, oh, actually, you know what? Three frames seems to be that sweet spot. Maybe I'll leave it at minus three. And this is something you'll really have to just dial in on your own system. And it looks like at three frames, this is working very optimally. And it's looking pretty clean, especially with just a generic webcam, no special hardware. I just have a laptop with an RTX 3070. So now there's a couple other tricks that are useful to know about this. One of them, and what I'll do before I talk about that, is actually set this to be my background so we can always see it. One of them is that you may even want to clean up these edges a little bit because we can actually see a little bit of my white wall around the edge of my head and shirt and all those kind of things. Now there's a few ways we can deal with this and the easiest way is usually after the NVIDIA background top. What we're going to do is add a little bit of blur so that we can blur the edges a little bit, fade them down, and then we're going to use a threshold top right after to basically clamp down on those areas that we blurred. So let's go ahead and first start by adding our blur top here. And these again are also things that you can dial in and it'll be very context dependent 
you know, if the lighting is strong or if the lighting isn't strong, if there's very complex people or very bald people like myself, it may change the equation for you. So in my blur, usually what I'll do is keep that pre-shrink set to one and I'll just turn up that filter size just a little bit. And we can see that it really softens that edge and gives us that feathering. And that's great because then what I can do is follow it up with a threshold top. And then with that threshold top, what I like to do is generally play with a mix of the threshold and the soften parameter. So what I'll do is I'll kind of move my threshold around till I'm just a little bit too tight. And then what I'll do is I'll just gently raise that soften just a little bit. And we can see when I do that, we can look at places like the top of my head or around my t-shirt and my shoulders. And we can see that we have a pretty good key happening here with no special hardware, no extra kind of fancy paid services, no machine learning setups that we have to do ourselves. So thank you NVIDIA for setting this up for us. And this is a really good tool because you can use this for connect cameras, you can use this for web cameras, you can use this for IP cameras, you can use this on video files with people in them. Everything can be run through this with exactly the same setup. Now, if you've gotten this far and what you're thinking about is, okay, well, I have this, how do I actually composite this onto a different background? Well, there's two ways you could do that. One of them is to actually change dynamically the second input of that matte top. And that's generally what I would recommend because the other way is going to involve us adding more composite operators afterwards. And really they're a little bit redundant. So for example, if I wanted to throw myself on maybe a nature background, I could make another movie file in here. And we can see inside of the touch designer directory, let's pick how about the woods here? Now what you can do here is really decide how you want to create this programming logic. I'm just going to go ahead and overwrite this wire for my constant. But you could make a switch top, cross top, really however you feel is the best way for you to transition between different backgrounds. And as long as those get fed in as that second input of the mat top, you can do all that compositing right in one operator. Now, if there is for some reason, maybe a lot of processing that happens later on, and maybe you want to do that before you do your compositing, you could absolutely just use the matte top to basically cut the person out. Then what we can do is use something like a composite top and plug our person into there. And we'll plug our background as the second input. And then we'll just change the operation to something like over. And we get a very similar result. Now the mat will be slightly better performing because it's just, you know, one less operator in our network, but this composite also gives you the flexibility to do different things with it. So with that said, it's really that easy to get a pretty good key. Now you can see in the fingers, fast motion still gets it a little bit tripped up, but on the overall, very clean key with no green screen. You can even see if you don't believe it, that's just me and a webcam in front of a white wall. Even if it was me in front of a wall with lots of stuff on it, I found it does a pretty good job at keying you out. So hopefully with that, you can experiment with some of these RTX features like the NVIDIA background top, and we're gonna be doing a lot of fun RTX experiments over the next few weeks. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.